Okay, so before we get to the wiring of that amp, I need to go to my blackboard and show you guys a basic drawing of what are we going to accomplish. Then I'm going to take all the parts and I'm going to lay them out for you on the ground so you guys can see what we're going to accomplish. And hopefully by then you guys will understand absolutely nothing and leave about 52 comments down below. Instructions not clear punch windshield okay so check this out I don't have engineering explains budget so my screen is not so big and I can't stand in front of it and say okay and talk about a bunch of crap nobody understands but hopefully you guys can get the basics of this this is your radio this is a good station where I live now your radio has a factory cable that hooks up to your radio that cable is going to go directly over to the amplifier from the amplifier the signal out from the amplifier is going to go to your factory harness now from your factory harness it is going to magically transfer all of the music to your front left front right rear left rear right or channel numbers one two three and four now, to explain this in actual physical, dimensional, quantum, semi-quantum state, what we're going to do is take the components and put them on the floor of the garage so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Let's do this. This is going to get plugged in direct. Right there. Look at that. Just clicked in. Let's move the amplifier. Let's do that. Okay. All right. So. It's plugged in direct. We can all agree to that. Yes, Raymond, you have plugged it in to your factory harness. Good for you. Now this amplifier, it's gonna go here, and then these are gonna go to here, to the signal input. These are the four channels input, input. What is it, Johnny Five from the 90s, 80s, that movie? Input, input. Now, this is output. Output. These little guys are going to go in there, and then this is going to plug in to your factory radio harness. Just like that. Input, output. Make sure you guys check out whatever amplifier you got where your input and where your output is things may differ slightly so what we have to do is we have to extend the audio portion of all of this because it has to go to the factory radio but at the same time it has to reach the amplifier and the reason we want to extend it and the reason we don't want to keep it so short is in the event that I need to pull the head unit out we want to have some distance to get us in and out of the vehicle. So I measured about, looks like two feet. You can see each one of these little, there's a lines right there. So there's one foot right there. And I believe that there was another one up there. So there's two feet total. Two feet total should be plenty. So I'm going inside the car. I'm going to there. Yeah, that's plenty. That allows me to pull the radio out and service it or change it or anything because, yes, it is an older radio. I don't know how long it will last. I have collected a few now. Now that I know that all the boomers are throwing them away, I will gladly take your radio. If you guys want to send me your old Ford radio, send it my way. I would love to recondition it and keep it in my collection. So, oop, that's the power one. So what we're going to do is extend this, and it's really, really simple, and this is the good old metric way where the one with the black stripe is the negative, and then the one that is solid is the positive. And I'm using what is known as speed wire, and this is install bay's nine conductor, so there's actually 
for all of the speakers plus there's a blue one and this is for a remote so we don't need that I'm gonna li literally just tape it off over here because in the future let's say I do end up uh, not burning the car to the ground and giving it to my kid and my kid wants to be a boomer and he decides to rip out all of this and put in a double din he'll be able to tap into a uh, trigger wire for the accessory turn on um, so let's go ahead let's match up the colors I got my soldering gun right here we're gonna do this the old school way with a uh, heat shrink and solder we're not going to use the scooby-doo connectors um i don't know how well these things are i really don't know how well these scooby-doo connectors are but uh i guess if you really didn't know how to solder you could use the scooby-doo connectors could be worth a shot though but i'm not going to do it so this is really really important this is going to be your tsa safety tip right here Anytime you guys solder, make sure you guys get a quality cancer causing one like this, where it has lead in it, because it's going to melt much easier and it's going to look a lot better and it's going to function better. It's going to be easier to work with, bottom line. The, the, the leadless ones are a pain in the butt. I can never get those to come out correctly. Also, make sure, because this has lead, that you're working in a well ventilated space as you can see here Ryobi's not a sponsor of the show I just like their products and if they want to send me some free stuff if they're one of the 100 people watching this I will gladly accept it so now let's go ahead get all these soldered in so now that the soldering is done everything's cooling off you should have something like this it should be all nice perfect just make sure guys and this is really really important I can't tell you how many times people have made this mistake as my voice is changing um, the cabling you need to make sure that your negative is your negative and your positives are connected to your positives I can't tell you how many times people have done this and they switch up one or two of these and their speakers sound bad and then ultimately you just get to looking and you're like hey you soldered the wrong one to the wrong one so just double check, triple check, quadruple check, and then you guys will be at this point. Now I'm going to take some nice uh, Tessa tape, and everybody thinks I always say Tesla tape. This is Tessa tape. Tessa. Tessa. And it's soft, like sheep fur. And wrap this up all the way through. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to put on some feral connections. That's right feral you guys heard me correctly like a wild piggy and these are going to go to the amplifier so it's going to be super nice super clean this is going to be something that um everybody's going to like and by everybody i mean not the boomers all right guys let's go back to our blackboard so that way we can understand this beautiful little machine there's the radio so the harness we just made the harness we literally just made is this one right here so that harness over here this one is going to be the harness that goes from the factory radio and it goes signal out or my bad signal in signal in it's going to be going right here. Why the hell did I write signal out and signal out? Jesus Christ. You guys would rip me a new one in the comment section. Let's go ahead and fix that. There we go. Signal in. Because it's the incoming signal to the amplifier. So here is going to be the signal in this camera in position so the signal in is going to be going right here so I know what you guys are thinking the next logical question well what's one two three four that's the speaker channels one two three four there's no real specific way that you're supposed to do this um, but there's kind of like a logical way and everybody tends to follow it numbers one and two typically uh, one is your front left two is your front right 
three, if you decided just to do the tweeters, would be a front left tweeter, front right tweeter. But we're not doing that since we're doing component. So it's going to be front left, front right, rear left, rear right. So here they are. There's the minus, the pluses. And then that's where all these little things have to go. Luckily, these little things come out. So it's not so bad to work. This thing's going to come out. And then I'm going to get the little ferrule connectors. Get those in there so they're nice and sexy. And then here, signal out. This is where it's going to go to the factory harness. Now, if you guys didn't want to use the factory harness, let's say you guys wanted to run all new speaker cabling, you could do that without a question. So you just had to get speaker cabling. Now, in my years of experience, uh, speaker cabling pretty much doesn't matter. As long as you guys get like a 16 gauge, you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, try to stay away from anything other than that. Uh, you want stranded, you don't want solid, and uh, honestly guys, speaker cabling, I, I can't find any justifiable proof that it actually makes a difference. And if you really wanted to get fancy, here are some aftermarket connectors to connect your speakers to. These are 12 gauge, these are beefy boys, uh, you'll never need that. But these are pretty cool, um, just stuff I have lying around. So, you could run all new speaker cabling from here to your new speakers. These are not my new speakers. But these could run all new cabling to the plus of the minus, all of that. So now let's go ahead and get this connected. And then we're going to connect the factory uh, harness adapter here. And then we'll be pretty much almost done. So let's talk about ferrule connectors. Those are ferrule connectors. Ferrule connectors give the connection point a solid good grip versus sticking the bare copper into this little guy. I know a lot of people like to stuff bare uh, wires into there and I know I probably did it in another video and I don't know why I did that but the correct way is to use these little ferrule adapters and you put on the one that fits in there and then you take this little um, star maker and you put this onto there and then you press it on and then this will be permanently gripped on there and you'll have a nice solid connection so something you don't have to worry about the cables fraying out or I'm sure somebody's gonna post in the comments well when you have 500 horsepower that amps gonna fly out of there Guys, I'm never going to have 500 horsepower in this car because I don't have $50,000 to dump into a 30-year-old car. So, we're going to go ahead and get these little ferrule connectors on here. And this is what it should look like after you guys are done with all your wild pig connections. Uh, as you guys can see, I have always, 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 I reference myself with whatever harness I went with. So... Uh, remember the orientation negative positive negative positive negative positive so yours may be different if you guys are not using this and just go through double check these will be the fronts these are the rears and this orientation here is going to match that orientation there so I literally have to install it like that pretty much except here these are going to cross like that so we'll be good to go. Now with this all completed, we can start putting the car together again. We can start putting the carpet in. Oh my god, the carpet. Uh, Alright, so I need to steam clean that carpet back over there. I'm not going to do that on camera. That's pretty boring. I mean, unless you guys get a happy face whenever Stanley Steamer comes to your house, I'm not going to really show this. And the carpet definitely... Lord knows what happened there. I think somebody got murdered in the car. But the carpet's definitely had better days. I'm not buying a new carpet. I can't justify spending $400 on a piece of fabric. Yes, it's 30 years old. Yes, it has a unique odor. But I think with a little bit of cleaning, it will be good as new. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll throw that into the car. And then with that into the car, I'll be able to start getting all that put together. And once we are there, we will do a test phase. And a test phase is before I put in all my JL Audio speakers and uh, potentially damage them, I'm just going to run everything and set everything up without the speakers in there because that amplifier allows me to check and see when distortion happens, which is really, really cool. It saves me install time. And of course, I'm going to double check when all the speakers are in. I'll uh, listen to the music, make sure that my music sounds good. That's it, guys. That's it for today. I hope you guys at least learned how to connect your amplifier to your factory harness. And I hope you guys will join me on this journey that has been done by thousands of YouTubers. And I hope um, you're one of the many 100 viewers that are enjoying this quality content. Make sure you guys hit the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because I would love to keep up these 100 viewers viewing my content. I think that that's amazing. Just remember, the 90s were very, very awkward, just like this car. Very, very awkward. And we'll get through this, guys. We'll get through this. We'll have some fun. Things will be interesting. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.